Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Professor Fred Ogola. I'm one of the leaders of Concerned Citizens Movement. Today we issue a statement on the state of the nation, which we describe as a question. Are we having crisis of government or government in a crisis? We, the leaders of Concerned Citizens, state that there is a crisis, leadership crisis, in Kenya, and we are saddened by what happened yesterday. It is among one of the days in Kenya that will go in the Kenyan history as one of the days which will be most unforgotten. This is because life was lost. No need to count how many lives, even if we have the number. Life is infinite in value, and there is no little amount of life that should be lost, especially within preventable circumstances. We kept wondering whether the passing of the bill was more important to the head of state than what will be the what will be done. What, 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 we kept wondering whether the passing of the bill is more important that it was to be done under all costs. If we take the president's statement yesterday, anything to go by, we believe proactively all the lives lost yesterday could be preventable given the circumstances that today he has declined to sign the bill. We would like to differentiate passing the bill at all costs and guarding Kenyan sovereignty at all costs. We believe that this was not at all costs uh, uh, guarding sovereignty because there was no challenge on that. It was more about passing of the bill. In the run-up to 2022 ele general elections, it was clear that the fifth president would have to be strategic in fixing the economy given the aftermath of the COVID-19 and the Russia-Ukraine war. With the assumption to office of President William Ruto that campaign on the bottom-up economic transformation agenda, Kenyans' hopes for improved livelihoods, comfort, and future has moved from bad to worse with the Finance Bill 2023-2024 and now hitting its worst with the eminent passing of the Finance Bill 2024-2025, even if it is still being sent back to the National Assembly. This has been worsened by President Ruto's administration, set up with poor service delivery, wanton corruption, wastage of public funds, lack of transparency and accountability. Ruto's government is so dysfunctional that it is incapable of citizen service delivery fixing the economic challenge they found plus the ones they have created. In that regard, we have two crises in Kenya. Crisis in government, which is the dysfunctional government and the economic problem before the government. These two crises is a double tragedy that has led to the emergence of the Gen Z's revolution as concerned citizens of Kenya. We would like to urge President William Ruto's administration to respect the Gen Z's revolutionary thinking, but not to dismiss it by threatening and killings. We are also parents just like the President and the First Lady are parents. How would they feel if it was one of their children lying on tarmac on Uhuru Highway like the several mothers, fathers, relatives and friends felt yesterday? We therefore state as follows and I let Joe to go on. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. Are we okay? Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, Kenyans, wherever you are. My name. Oh, have to do this. So I have to redo that. Eh? Yes, start again. Good afternoon, Kenyans, wherever you are. I'm Dr. Joseph uh, Mugashia, a co-convener of the Concerned Citizens Movement. My colleague, Professor Ogola, has explained what crisis we have in government, and at the same time, we have a government in crisis. Therefore, from yesterday's uh, activities, 
the killing of young people, the wounding of young people, and the invasion of parliament. We make the following uh, statement in addition to what my colleague has talked about. Um, first, we note that the president has declined signing of the bill that Kenyans have been pushing for uh, withdrawal. It is a step in the right direction. However, it would have been good for the president to withdraw the bill and let the Finance Act process 2024 start all over again with complete and exhaustive uh, citizens' participation. Um, having said that, we will watch and we hope Parliament will do the right thing and listen to what Kenyans are telling them. We are tired of being taxed arbitrarily. We are tired of being overtaxed. And we are tired of being taken for granted. We need leadership. We don't need to be abused and forced to keep on producing money without, in terms of taxes, without getting the necessary or the, um, the corresponding uh, development services. We will keep watch on that. Now, regarding yesterday's uh, disaster, because that is a disaster, where young people were killed, uh, uh, private businesses were vandalized, parliament was occupied. At the result of it all, we have the military out in the streets. We have the following to say. First, we are very deeply concerned and sorrowed by the killings <coughs> and the maiming of peaceful protesters by the police. Our hearts are with the victims of the police brutality. The lives and sacrifices that Kenyans made, and these are majority youthful Kenyans or the Gen Z, as well as other Kenyans that participated, shall not go in vain. We shall follow up and we will ensure that the nation, uh, the nation does not go to that kind of uh, incident again. And that is why we are pushing for the amendment of the Constitution so that citizens have the power to recall the president and the deputy president when they unsatisfactorily um, serve the citizens. That way, people will direct their action on the leaders and not on facilities and institutions. Because people will know that they have the power to control their leaders when they go in excess of what they have been assigned. We note also with deep concern that some in the protest group broke the peace and entered a protected area, that is parliament, where they vandalized and also uh, scared the legislators. We call for peaceful protests and respect of both public and private facilities in accordance with the law and democratic governance. We call, up, <coughs> we call upon all protesters to voice their concerns in peace and avoid any action that demonstrates willful violation of the law. This is a responsibility for all of us. So the demonstrators must be peaceful and the police must be restrained. The security agents, not only the police, now we have the military on the streets. Everybody must be restrained and follow the law. Our concerns are about bad leadership, oppressive and thieving uh, leaders, not about infrastructure and institutions. All concerned citizens and any other protesters must therefore fight with their voices, thoughts and peaceful movement and not fire 
and physical damage. Kenyans, we, will, we all need those facilities. We cannot talk of good, I mean bad governance, and we are looking for go, uh, good governance, and then we are destroying what we have built over many years. Development is an incremental activity. You don't wake up and you find a new building. You build it over time. You don't wake up and find an institution. You build them over time. So by being violent and destroying these institutions and facilities, then we are escalating poverty, not bringing in good governance. Uh, we, however, note that the, those who came in, those who broke into parliament, we don't know if they were part of the protesters or they were plants in the, in the, in the group or they were criminals. We note that the president has stated or stated yesterday in his speech that there are criminals who infiltrated the uh, demonstrators. We would like to believe the president and we would like him to produce the criminals because he has the machinery. If he knows there are criminals, then he must be having the identity. We do not want generalization. We want the criminals to be identified and, the prosec and prosecuted according to the law. So that is the work of the police to protect the, uh, the, demos, the peaceful demonstrators. Um, we ask the president and the members of parliament to embrace peaceful dialogue. We would like to see the president talking to his people to ask the Kenyans and listening to what we are presenting as our issues, not to see the military and the police brutalizing Kenyans who are expressing the pain we are having because of a bad economy and poor leadership. Now, in conclusion, we call upon all citizens concerned about the wrong direction our nation has deeply been driven to keep up the pressure on the president, other leaders, and the government until our voices are heard. We remain focused on tangible ch constitutional change and we will keep pushing for the change in the constitution so that we are able to oversight our leaders directly by, ch by amending uh, chapter one of the constitution of Kenya which says power, sovereign power belongs to the people. They exercise it directly all through delegation to leaders. I would like to tell people, I've had a lot of people, including very senior leaders, telling us that we donate power to the leaders. Kenyans, we never donate power to leaders. We only delegate. When you donate, you can't recall it. If you give somebody blood, that is a donation. You cannot go back and reclaim your blood. So, in this matter, we delegate our power, our sovereign power to the leaders and we never donate. That is why we are saying in the change of the constitution to meona hatuna mad, I mean to kona madaraka lakini hatuna mamla, uh, mamlaka mamlaka ya kuamua vile viongozi wamefanya kazi na vile tutafanya na wao. Kwa hivyo tunasema hakuna madaraka Bila mamlaka. So until we get uh, the power to make decisions, we are not resting. I call upon Kenyans to support, to support this initiative and let us move, change the constitution and we get, we have the madaraka, that is the self-rule, so that we can have the mamlaka, that is the power to decide. God bless you and God bless Kenya. Thank you very much. Mm. Okay, so go ahead on that. So as far as um, as far as we are concerned, there's
There's a process of doing any bill. A bill begins with the Treasury proposing a bill. It can go through the Cabinet. After going to the Cabinet, the bill is introduced in Parliament. And then Parliament takes the bill through public participation, then it comes back to Parliament. Then after that, uh, Parliament goes through the first reading, second reading and third reading, then the bill is passed and signed by the President. But here we are finding that these bills that are being introduced by Kenya Kwanzaa administration, they are not going through that process. Like now, after the finance bill had been introduced in Parliament, it was taken out for public participation. It came back to the House, then the, finance, the, budget, the, the, committee, the finance committee met in Ivasha. Then they went to take the bill to State House and they changed the bill from State House in a press conference. That is not the right process of doing a bill. Now that the bill has gone through um, second reading, third reading, it was supposed to be signed by the President, the President has sent the bill back uh, to Parliament. Now, what does that mean? If there are changes to be done, are they going back for public participation from people? If you see the people's anger, the rage that was there, when people are willing to take a bullet, they're willing to take a bullet because they were rejecting the finance bill, they didn't feel that there was enough public participation, if at all there was any. They felt that their voice was not heard. And that's why we are trying to say that according to us, this is not the right process because people have said reject, don't amend. So when the president is taking the bill back to parliament, he's taking it back for amendment, not for it to be withdrawn. Our advice was that withdraw the bill, start afresh, start with the people, walk with the people of Kenya. The fact that Kenyans are poor, it doesn't mean that they, are, they don't know what they want. The fact that they are poor doesn't mean they are stupid. In fact, you are richer than Kenyans because Kenyans have made you rich with their own money. So we are asking the president to listen to Kenyans, withdraw this finance bill in totality, and ask Kenyans, where do we start?